good morning. Welcome you all to the NPTEL course on Electrical Distribution System Analysis. Today we will be focusing on design and operation aspects of distribution system. As you all know that in case of distribution system, the moment the energy is available from the sub transmission level to the distribution systems, probably the cables, the distribution transformers and hence the customers. So, different distribution network architecture do exist and we need to optimize the architecture so that with minimum losses the consumers can get energy in a low voltage network. Now, when you talk about engineering design means before we plan a distribution system, what we need to focus and what are the expected outcome of the engineering design of distribution system. Engineering in electric power distribution is the application of scientific and technological knowledge mainly to planning, design, construction, operation and maintenance of various electric supply schemes for the benefit of our society. So, first of all we need to identify the statement of problem, then we slowly move to the conceptual design and then definitive design and finally, the detailed design before we go for working drawings. Now, first of all, we need to also make sure what would be my distribution system design so that the efficiency of the distribution system is reasonably higher. Mandatory energy accounting in the system unit as per national power policy with a focus on making each 11 kb feeder energy efficient and profitable. Special emphasis on energy accounting for distribution transformers in theft prone areas, noting current low distribution system efficiency and approximately 30 percent electrical efficiency at the consumer end. Now, if you see the way energy get transmitted, we talk about a power plant, then we move to transmission distribution and finally, the consumer end. So, in case of power plant, we may consider any sort of uh, generation resources, but in case of thermal and hydro that actually the auxiliary consumption energy which is close to 8 percent in case of thermal and 0.5 percent in case of hydro, but as you will know both thermal and hydro operate with a very good experience between 90 to 99 percent. Now, in case of distribution system and transmission system, the losses go as high as actually 30 plus percentage. Though the transmission system losses are close to 5 to 6 percent and probably for very good efficient transmission system, the loss is limited to even 2 percent maximum. However, the distribution system losses vary from 10 percent to 22 percent depending upon the kind of distribution system it is. Now, the efficiency, the overall efficiency is close to 66 percent because 30 plus percentage is getting into your losses uh, including uh, you know kind of even bit of uh, economic losses are taken into account here. So, as a whole that approximately 60 to 66 percent efficiency can be gained in your transmission and distribution system. Now, moving to the consumer end actually that is perhaps the majority of our equipment based and the efficiency is close to uh, 10 to 70 percent, but on an average the efficiency is close to 30 to 35 percent in case of consumer end. Now, to improve the system efficiency, probably you could see uh, the, the US uh, electricity flow diagram and uh, with different kind of resources and with different kind of transmission distribution network and finally, the consumers, the efficiency are being uh, defined. But the very important part what I like to highlight here, when you see the conversion losses, which is as high as actually 18 percent, but that is to be a very, very uh, improved distribution transmission network, but in reality probably it may as we discussed in the past it may go as high as 25 to 30 percent. Now, the residential uh, is close to 5.19 percent, commercial is 4.68 percent, industrial is 3.44 percent, transportation is 0.02 percent as and so different systems as you could see, but very important the T and D losses and unaccounted for close to point. 81 percent which is very important. Now, considering the efficiency issues, 
because starting from your energy to transmission distribution to the consumer almost 70 to 75 percent energy is being lost due to manifold. How do we improve it? There are many methods for efficiency improvement and they are renovation and modernization of old power plants because those who are getting older the efficiency drops down. So, probably we can put a lot of effort to increase their efficiencies. Reducing uh, theft energy which is not a very common thing across the world, but especially in southern Asia region where we experience bit of unaccounted energy. Uh, and then reducing losses which is a very big issue because the transformers are extremely old devices. So, probably the distribution system losses are keep on increasing over a period of time and accountability 100 percent metering is an important issue. Better operation and maintenance practices adopting high voltage distribution system that is HPDS and introducing automation. Now, what are the short term measures which can be implemented within let us say 1 to 2 years? Uh, we can do a bit of uh, network reconfiguration to reduce the losses and network reconductoring, load balancing and load management, capacitor installation which is a very important area, empowering automatic voltage boosters, improving joint and connections, relocation of DTRs that is distribution transformers at load center, augmenting DTR capacities, adding of new DTRs, better management and distribution transformers and finally, change over from LVDS to HPDS. Now, long term measure which is normally planned between 3 to 5 years time, they are upgrading, strengthening and improvement of sub transmission and distribution system in a circle to meet the future load demand. Augmentation of the transformation capacity at the existing 66 kV or 33 kV substations. Regarding reconfiguration that is 33 to 66 kV feeder by using higher size conductors and or increasing the number of feeders. Establishing new 33 or 66 slash 11 kV substations nearer to the load as possible. Redistributing the loads between existing and new substations. Feeder strengthening, addition of new 11 kV feeders and reconductoring of existing feeders. And finally, addition of distribution transformers and LT lines. Now, how do you design? Because you realize that this is what the load need to be catered. This is what the supply is available to me. I have to put lot of actually distribution feeders as well as substation transformers to meet out the load requirement. But there are many design tools are being commonly used. There are robust and advanced tools utilize analytical and computer based tools for efficient design, ensure comprehensive parameter considerations, transparency in calculation that is select a software that provides detailed calculation for result verification and accuracy depends on the quality of the softwares. Expertise is certainly essential because the engineers those are working in this field must have lot of basic understanding of fundamentals of electrical engineering including a different theorems, network theorems and other parameters. And but some weak points are normally also need to be highlighted. Feeders where voltage drop is beyond the permissible limit lines where losses are above the prescribed limits, lines and transformers operating closer to the exceeding the thermal limit, lines and other equipment where the fault level is closer to or exceed the fault rating. So, whenever you are violating the permissible limits, then these are the challenges need to be solved at a distribution level design. Now, what are the major criteria? The rule of distribution system design total generation at any moment is equal to the total electricity consumption and distribution losses in the system means consumption plus the losses must be equal to generation. And the losses should be minimized. Electricity is allowed to flow through the grid network in accordance with physical laws. The distribution system must be designed for some contingency enabling continuity of supply. For an example, always it is better to have actually at least n minus 1 contingency for your substation transformers and reasonably the main feeders of the distribution networks. 
as per the planning criteria, distribution substations are located, primary feeder rotate and the distribution system need to be designed in detail. All these design decisions affects reliability, quality and cost, automated design tools can be made to minimize total cost. Engineering design criteria are framed to specify precisely how equipment such as primary feeder lines are to be assembled with suitable conductor size and spacing with support structures to handle the weight, wind, ice loading, load, fault current to be expected. The changes in the specifications of the discrete equipment and layout standards, service area assignment coincident of peak and other specific requirements. The power utility shall prepare an operational code to incorporate all the criteria and standards of the distribution system operation. The criteria defines the principles of operation and the following items that need to be covered. Number one, notification in advance to consumers about the outage program. Contingency planning that is the power utility will stipulate the steps to restore and maintain power supply to the consumers in a quick and efficient manner whenever there is a system failure. And probably we need to avoid it, but if there is a failure, we need to come back to the normalcy as soon as possible. Sectionalizing the distribution system and scheduling in order of priority the essential and non-essential loads to be connected during the restoration process is necessary, especially if there is a hospital network or some emergency network that need to be given priority compared to other non-essential loads. The power utility shall also prepare an operational code to incorporate all the criteria and standards of the distribution system operation. The criteria defines the principles of operation that is issues of public notification before the start of the year of the month wise power and energy shortage expected in the power utility area means what is the peak energy deficit at each distribution level. Any peak load restrictions will be notified in advance. Restricted supply arrangement for agriculture will be notified in advance. Metering arrangement for energy audit at the substation to prepare the feeder wise energy balance sheet and the whole substation. The power utility shall prepare an operational code to incorporate all the criteria and standards of the distribution system operation. The criteria defines the principles of operation and the following items need to be covered. The power utility business unit will prepare the month wise energy balance sheet annually along with efficiency benchmark for each 11 kV feeder. Energy received at each distribution substation that is either 66, 33, 11 kV. Energy consumption at the substation. Energy sent out of each 11 kV feeder of the substation. Energy billed for each feeder also detailing consumer category wise. Total losses of the system in kilowatt hour. Technical and non-technical loss computed in the each feeder level. Now the operating standard may comprise some of the following items. Consumer meter shall be periodically tested, calibrated for correct working as per the section 26 of the Indian Electricity Act 1910. Complete schedule for different categories of consumer meters shall be prepared. Any breakdown in the system that is 33 kV and above will be analyzed and an investigation report prepared for remedial measures. A schedule for maintenance of lines and other equipment shall be prepared. And finally, data logging will be done at all feeders. Now we can move to a bit of load management where policy is in use of frequency trend relays or discrete frequency relays for automatic load shedding under emergency on selected 132 or 66 kV feeders. Energy audit exercise on a monthly basis shall be carried out for each 11 kV feeder for energy balance to prepare the energy balance sheet. Finally, the safety standard, safety code prepared in accordance with IE rules, safety code test pass will be compulsory for all the staffs. Now, the power utility shall use a service level time schedule for the following consumer services. For restoring power supply after fault in case of different categories of consumers, 
for providing supply and meter for a consumer of various categories, response time of consumer's meter billing complaints, and time taken to investigate the consumer's voltage complaints. Operating standard may comprise some of the following terms or items. Parallel operation of power transformers at the substation shall be carried out in city areas, but in rural areas, power transformers will be operated in isolation. Negative unbalanced voltage not exceeding 1.5% shall be allowed in LT lines. The consumer power factor for industrial consumers will not be less than 0.9 lagging following which a penalty will be lived. At distribution substation 11 kV bars, the power factor of the incoming load would not be less than 0.95 lagging and not beyond 0.95 leading. For any outgoing load, the power factor will not be less than 0.9 lagging and not beyond 0.99 leading. And that will take care of your reactive power requirement in the system. The sub-transmission line supplies power from the bulk power sources to a distribution substation at a voltage ranging from 33 to 220 kV. The distribution substation containing power transformers with controlling circuit breakers, buses, protection equipment reduces sub-transmission voltage to lower primary voltage in the range of 22 to 11 kV for local distribution. Distribution transformers in rating from 10 to 630 kVA are connected to a primary feeder and they reduce the voltage 433 slash 250 or 415 by 240 depending upon the transformer network connections to delivery utilization or service voltage of 400 to 230 volt plus or minus 6 percent at the consumer end. The main consideration for sub-transmission design is economics as well as reliability. The system design options are radial system, ring main as well as grid or network type. Now let us try to understand what is ring type, what is radial type and what is grid or network type. The ring main can be closed or open. An open ring main is more common and which is considered to be a cheaper design of distribution system. It provides the isolating switch or circuit breaker as a link normally open for alternative supply. But supply restoration takes a comparatively longer time. The higher reliability and higher quality of power is obtained when the sub-transmission system is operated in a closed ring. But this requires an expensive protection system and the operation becomes more complicated. If you focus on a radial distribution system, you could see the bulk power source bus and then we move to sub-transmission circuits and you could see distribution substations and one to other you could see the there is a radial system and probably none of the two load points are actually connected. And this is what the standard architecture of a IEEE 33 bus radial distribution system. You have the source and then each and every feeder goes to different locations and which is known as radial distribution system. We can also see a bit of architecture related to ring main distribution system. And in case of ring main, as you could see that the main power sources, we come to sub transmission circuits and distribution substations. And the architecture as you could see is ring main. But the very interesting part is that two different substation transformers are also connected. So this is where the ring main is slightly different. If you open it up, then become your radial for you. Okay. So ring main is slightly uh, in between your radiality as well as uh, close network based uh, distribution networks. Now just to give you an idea about how practical uh, campus distribution network look like. So we have tried to capture the IIT Roorkee ring main distribution system because in case of ring main the actually the reliability is reasonably higher. Okay? It has been designed that if one substation fails probably most of the important loads can be catered through other substations. So this is your IIT Roorkee main distribution substation so which has a 33 kV substation and 11 kV networks. 
and this is how actually the detailing of open ring main distribution system of IIT Roorkee. Then we can move to grid or network type distribution network uh, where it is a bit complicated and most of the substations are integrated or connected and as you could see that almost everywhere could you see there is an interconnection, there is an interconnection, there is an interconnection. So, that shows most of your sub transmission network and distribution substances are integrated through grid network. Now, grid or network type distribution systems they practically look like this and then we can slowly move to substation and feeder network. Substation function and placement, I mean how do you decide where to place your substation? Substations are pivotal in transforming and transferring electrical energy between the lines ideally located near and center of the load area of optimal efficiency. Now, feeders originating from a single source point at substation operate at primary distribution voltages to deliver power across assigning areas. Now, these feeders from a substation covers all assigned loads typically in areas shaped as circles, polygons or hexagons with the substation centrally located in uniform load distributions. So, probably the reason of saying circular polygon and hexagon to optimize your distribution system where each and every uh, junction point uh, within a circle or within a polygon or within a hexagon can be tapped into a load point. So, the overall distribution losses can be minimized. Now, natural obstacles or historical planning limitations may necessitate deviation from the ideal substation placement and feeder routes because uh, practically there are few. Uh, you know buildings that you cannot disturb or the visibility, the architectural planning point of view, few substations cannot appear at a particular point then probably you have to do bit of compromise. Now, feeders are designed starting from substation with main trunks using large economical conductors branching into spurs to distribute power and usually align with existing street roads and property boundaries. The distribution substation is the convenient point for the control and protection of the distribution network. A typical substation may have the following equipment, substation, bus, power transformers, circuit breakers, isolating switches, CTs, PTs, sun capacitors, protection relays, lightning arresters, station batteries, earthing structures, etc. Now, an important factor for selecting the type of bus bar is the degree of reliability of supply during maintenance and fault. The amount of duplication and sectionalizing determines reliability. Future expansion is another consideration and the different bus schemes are we can either think of a single bus, double bus, main and transfer bus, mess or ring bus and Brecken and half design in distribution system which is quite common. Now, why we go for sectionalizer? Used to sectionalize the line to increase reliability, isolate faulty line sections under fault conditions, helps in reducing the time for fault detection as well as repair. Now, there are two uh, major sectionalizers type. One is manual gang operating air switches and the second one is automatic vacuum sectionalizers. The best location for a pole mounted sectionalizer or isolator switch is determined by analyzing the reduction in outage cost at various potential locations. Now, finally, we need to also when there is a sectionalizer, sectionalizer is used to disconnect a portion of the network and then finally, you have to restore. Okay. So, power supply can be restored from alternative sources feeders through interconnections and during reconfiguration a normally open NO switch is closed forming a loop in the system. So, as you could see uh, that uh, the outgoing feeders and you could see that the outgoing feeders through circuit breakers, transformers and isolators and there is a circuit breaker which connect 
two different feeders of the network. Now the sectionalized bus bar system normally look like this where two feeders can be connected or can be sectionalized or isolated. Now distribution substations in feeder majorly the practical IIT Roorkee Bigyan Kun substation look like this. So this is the benefit uh, just to help you understand how practical a real distribution substation and feeder look like. And with this, we are coming to an end of today's lecture and we will again continue with the same distribution system design in our next lecture. Thank you.